Hello students. Today's topic is on the continuation of the topic basics of entomology. In this topic we would discuss about the external morphology of insects especially with the mouth parts and if possible the wings of insects. So mouth parts. Mouth parts are the organs concerned for the ingestion of variety of food which is available in the nature. The variation of mouth parts can be correlated with the methods of different feeding habitats, different feeding habits, and the techniques of IPM, which is called as insect pest management. With the help of the mouth parts, one can know the taxonomical importance of the insects because the mouth parts gives the clues for the classification of insects in various groups. The mouth parts comprises the unpaid upper lip or is known, of, is known as labrum which is located in the front and there is a lower lip on the ventral surface which forms the epipharynx and a tongue-like hypopharynx behind the mouth, a pair of jaws also known as mandibles and the paid maxillae and a labium forming the lower lip. The mouth parts may include up to two pairs of sensory feeler like palps, which are called as labial palps or maxillary palps. Various pairs of glands, such as labial glands, mandibular glands, maxillary glands, and thoracic glands, are also associated with the mouth parts. So these glands. are present in the insects which help them in detecting the taste and giving rise to various kinds of enzymes and helping in mixing the food. In insects, the mouth parts do not lie in the cavity of the head and this condition is called as ectonathus. Whereas the mouth parts of certain insects such as columbola, dipedura, and protura lie in the cavity of the head. And those insects with this condition are known as entonathus insects, and the condition is called as entonathus. So the mouth parts lying inside the cavity are called as entonathus. The mouth parts which are not lying in the cavity are called as ecto, ectognathus. So mouth parts here in this picture, you can see divided into different parts such as labrum. This is the labrum. Labrum is fused, simple fused slerite and it is often known as the upper lip and it moves longitudinally and it is hinged to the clypeus. It is fused with, it is attached with the clypeus. This is the upper lip of an insect, which is called as labrum. Mandibles, a pair of mandibles. You can see these are a pair of mandibles. These are also called as jaws. These are hardened structures. And these structures has two regions, the grinding region at the upper end, incising region at the lower end with incisions. These structures, they move at right angles to the body. These mandibles, are used especially for biting the food, chewing, 
and severing the foot. Next comes the maxillae. These maxillae or pair of maxilla present, which they are plural, they are known as maxillae. These are paid structures, which can also, they also move at right angles to the body. And these possess palps, maxillary palps. Because these maxillae produces palps, they are called as maxillary palps. Another structure which is present is called as labium. This is the labium. Labium is known as lower lip. It is fused structure. This is fused with the ligula. It is fused structure that moves longitudinally and possesses a pair of segmental palps. This also consists of palps, the segmental palps. So labium is the lower lip which is fused with the ligula and also consists of palps. Hypopharynx, this is called as hypopharynx. It is somewhat globular in shape, which is arising at the base of the labium. So this is the base of the labium where the hypopharynx arises, which is like a tongue. It assists in swallowing the food. So these are the basic mouth parts of an insect. Consist, the mouth parts consisting of labrum, labium, pair of mandibles, a pair of maxilla, pair of maxillary palps, which are called as maxillulae, pair of maxillae, they are called as maxillae, so labium, lower lip, and tongue, which is called as hypopharynx. So there are different types of mouth parts. The types of mouth parts is based on the type of a food which the insect takes. So chewing type of mouth parts, such, so some insects consist of chewing type of mouth parts such as grasshoppers or mantis. So these are the structures, the original structures and these, these are the structures, this is the figure which you have seen and these are the original structures of an insect. So you can see the labia, maxilla, maxillary palps, mandibles, <coughs> excuse me, labium and labial palps, ligula. Okay, so different types of mouth parts such as chewing type, which is found in grasshopper or mantis, piercing and sucking type found in mosquitoes or Asian bugs, sponging type is found in house fly, siphoning in fleas, chewing and lapping uh, is present in honeybees. So you can see the mouths of different, mouth pieces of different insects. So it's varying, they're modified, the mouth parts are modified according to their food habit. So chewing type of mouth parts look like this. That means parts of a mouth parts gets dominated, gets modified for a particular kind of food they take. So the type of the food they ingest, the mouth parts are so modified in the insects. So when you look at the piercing and sucking insect, there is a modified structure. This structure helps in piercing and helps in sucking. What is this structure? Let us see. There is a siphon-like structure in certain kinds of insects such as butterflies, so which helps in siphoning, taking of the food in the form of nectar. 
sponging. So sponging type of food can be seen in certain kinds of flies. So the mouth parts are modified according to their food habit. Chewing mouth parts. These mouth parts represent the simplest type of mouth parts or the basic type of mouth parts which exist in the insects. They occur in the silver fish, which is lepisma, grasshoppers, cockroaches, beetles, dragonflies, bird lice, and caterpillars. Most of the insects have this chewing type of mouth parts. So chewing, because they bite off the prey, these insects bite the prey, they chew and swallow the prey, that is the food, into small bits from, especially from the plant and animal tissues. So as they bite and chew and swallow into bits of pieces and then ingest such kind of mouth parts are called as chewing mouth parts. Here, the Mouth parts consist of labrum, mandibles, pair of mandibles, first maxillae, second maxillae. That means there are maxillae. You have seen maxillae. I have explained about the maxillae. So there are pairs of maxillae in different insects. Here, in these insects, the first maxillae, second maxillae are also present along with the hypopharynx. This is about the chewing mouth parts. Chewing and lapping mouth parts. This occurs especially in certain kinds of insects such as worker bees, honey bees. In honey bees, there are different castes like queen, drones, worker bees. So the queen, not the queen, not the drone, but this chewing, lapping type of mouth parts occurs in worker bees. Because these worker bees, they collect the nectar and molding wax. For that, they have to use the lapping mechanism to collect the nectar. Not only that, these worker bees also makes the food into bits. So for that, they have to chew. So both chewing and lapping type of modified mouth parts are present in this kind. So the mouth parts which are present in these insects are labrum, a pair of mandibles which are chewing type, maxillae and labium or modified for collecting nectar which are lapping type. Mandibles are smooth. These mold the wax to build the cells of the hive, honeycomb. You can see. So this is the mouth parts of a worker bee, where the mouth parts got modified. The labium gets modified here. The tongue is protruded here. This type of lapping uh, type of mouth parts is mainly because of this modification of this maxillae and the labium for collecting the nectar. Thus, this type of mouth parts becomes chewing and lapping mouth parts. Piercing and sucking type of mouth parts. These forms of mouth parts are used especially to penetrate the solid tissue and suck up the liquid food, especially mosquitoes. The definite feature of the order Hemiptera is the possession of mouth parts where the mandibles and maxillae, here the mandibles so you can see the mandibles and maxillae 
or modified into proboscis. This is the proboscis. So mandibles and maxillae are no longer like a hardened structures which I have shown you in the first slide. But here they have, they have modified in the form of proboscis. This is the proboscis. The maxillae, they're modified into proboscis sheathed within a modified labium. It, they are sheathed within a modified labium. Even the labium is modified here. The mandibles are modified here in the form of a proboscis and with a sheath. This helps in sucking the tissue, sucking the blood or sucking the juices from the plant tissues or from the animal tissues. So especially mosquitoes. Mosquitoes suck blood from the animal tissues. Animals, they pierce into the skin of the animal, man, and suck the blood. The female anaphylis, female mosquitoes especially. Whereas the males, the males also have the modified mouth parts to suck the plant juices. The males are phytophagous in nature, whereas the females are hematophagous in nature. In piercing, this is a, about piercing and sucking type of mouth parts. Sponging and lapping mouth parts. Sponging and lapping mouth parts occurs in dipterans such as house flies, flies, blow flies, fruit flies. So here in the sponging type, the food is absorbed in the form of a fluid, whether it's a solid fluid or in the form of an, any hard fluid, hard food, it is absorbed by liqui liquidified, liquefied by the salivary secretion of the flies. Uh, and thus the food is taken in the form of sponging mechanism. So the hardened food or the solidified food gets liquidified, liquefied by salivary secretion of the insects, thus sucking the food in the form of liquid food, making uh, I mean, from the solid food, the liquid, the, uh, out of the solid food, the liquid food is made by mixing with the saliva and thus taking inside through a modified mouth parts called sponging or lapping mouth parts. Here, the mandibles are absent, whereas the maxilla also reduced. Instead, what are the parts present? The parts are rostellum, hostellum, and sucker. So these are the different mouth parts which you see in this. The hostellum, rostellum, and rostrum, hostellum, and sucker. Example, flies. Siphoning mouth parts. Siphoning mouth parts occur in butterflies and moths, especially in the lepidopterans. So here, these small parts helps in drawing the fluid in the form of a, uh, especially nectar from the flowers. So here the labrum is reduced. The mouth parts especially represented by narrow transverse band, like a siphon. This is a narrow transverse band, which is called as a siphon, helps in siphoning the food in the form of a liquid nectar from the flowers, especially present in butterflies and moths. So these are the different types of mouth parts which are found in different kinds of insects. So these mouth parts, especially used for taking off various types of food. Here in siphoning type of food, the, what is the type of food? That food is in the form of liquid food, which is the form of nectar. So for 
taking the liquid food, the mouth parts are modified in the form of a siphon. Okay, so when you look at the siphoning, lapping, siphoning as sorry, sponging and lapping mouth parts, you find another three structures which are the rostrum hostellum sucker. These rostrum hostellum suckers, these are especially used to take and uh, convert, uh, helps in converting the solid food to the liquid food and thus, and it helps in making the spongy secretion and thus spongy secretion is imbibed, is ingested inside the mouth. So for that, the, the food is, so what kind of food habit is here? The food may be in the solid form or gel form or any form, but the solid form is made into liquid form with the help of the secretions uh, by the insect where with the modified structures such as rostrum, hostilum and suckle, it sucks the even the solid food into the form of liquid food. So this type of food habits is seen in flies and this type of sponging mechanism is present in them. So piercing, piercing and sucking. So they have to pierce into the tissues. For that, the mouth parts are modified. So this mouth, they especially feed on the juices or the juices of the tissues. So those insects which feeds on the juices of the tissues of whether it's a plant origin or an animal origin, they, they belong to piercing and sucking type. And those insects, uh, which basically consists of uh, biting and chew, they, they helps in the mouth parts, which aids in biting as well as chewing, and also helps in taking the liquid food. That in such case, both the two types of uh, mouth parts are present, such as chewing and lapping type. So chewing and lapping type, both of these mouth parts serves for two purposes. One serves for taking the, collecting the nectar that is lapping mouth parts. The chewing mouth parts helps in building the foam, honeycomb. So chewing mouth parts, basically all the, uh, almost all the insects consist of chewing mouth parts. So most of the groups of the insects are of chewing mouth, are consisting of chewing mouth parts. For that, any kind of food, so the solid food or the gel food, especially the solid food or the gel food, whether it's a plant origin, animal origin or any origin. So these insects, basically they're omnivorous in nature. It is phytophagus and uh, animophagus or the omnivorous, omnivorous in nature. So such kind of insects, they chew, they bite, they chew, they swallow and then they eat. Such grinding is also seen. Such mouth parts are called as chewing mouth parts. So, based on the food habitat, the based on the food habits, the mouth parts are so modified to eat this food. So, chewing mouth parts, chewing lapping mouth parts, piercing and sucking mouth parts, sponging and lapping mouth parts, and siphoning mouth parts. Now, let us know about the types of wings present in the insects. So insect wings. So insect wings, insects have wings. Where does the wings present in an insect? The insect consists of pairs of one pair of wings or double pair of wings or no wings also. But if the wings are present, they are present on the thoracic region. Thoracic, they arise from the thoracic region. Even the legs also, the three pairs of legs also originate from the thoracic region. So the, some of the insects have wings and some of them do not have the wings. So those insects which doesn't have wings, they are known as aterigotes, aterigota. That means the adults like immature, they are without the wings. 
So even the adults, even though they are adults, they are like immature, that means they doesn't have wings. Those insects which doesn't possess the wings are known as Aterigota or Aterigots. Terra. Terra means wing. A terra means no wing. Terigota. Terigota means wings, possessing wings. The adult insects possessing the wings is, are known as terigots and are the terigota. Again, the wings which are developing from the places that is, the, if the wings develop externally on the nymph body, they belong to exopterigots. Exo means outside the body. So the wings which develop inside the body, especially in the immature insects, it is not visible until it changes into an adult. So those are called as endoterigots. So the wings which are developing externally on the nymph body, especially they belong to exoterigota, wings developing from inside the body, they are known as endoterigota. So based on the process of the wings, the insects are called as aterigots or erigots. Again, based on the process of internal wings and external wings, they are called as exoterigots and endoterigots. So there are different types of wings. The wings are membranous in nature, they are scaly in nature, they are tegiments. So here, when you see elytra, what are elytra? The elytra are, there are different types of wings like elytra, hemi-elytra, halters, in different kinds of insects. The insect's wings are in the form of membranous, they may be in the form of elytra, they may be in the form of hemi-elytra, they may be in the form of halters, they may be in the form of scales, and some of them are in the form of tegina. Let's see. So, basically, you can see here in this figure, this insect consists of a pair of wings two pairs of wings here. The first pairs of wings are called as four wings and the second pair of wings are called as hind wings. Some of the insects, they possess only one pair of wings. Some of them possess two pairs of wings and some of them possess only one pair, hemiptera. Some of them Versus all. So modification of insect wings. So there are modifications. Like the wings consists of four wings and hind wings. Here the four wings and hind wings are modified into scale-like structures or they are modified into hardened structures or they may be modified into membranous structures. So depending on the habit and habitats of the insects, the flying mechanism of the insects, the wings are also modified. So here Elytra. What are elytra? The wings here. So, yeah. So, before that, insect wings. What are the insect wings? I told you these insect wings are in the form of outgrowths of the insect exoskeleton that enable the insects to fly. So where are they found? They're found in the thoracic region. Yes, especially, yeah, you try to remember this. The wings are present especially on the second and third segments of the thoracic region. Mesothoracic region is the region where, yeah, this mesothoracic region, this is mesothoracic region is where the four wings arise 
metathoracic region is where the hind wings arise this picture is wrong but basically that is the uh, origin of the wings okay so the mesothorax and metathorax of the main regions of the two pairs of the wings that is in the form of four wings and the hind wings respectively in the insects a few insects lack hind wings so some of the insects have rudiments that is the small parts of the wings are called as rudiments remnants they are called they are also called as remnants or rudiments these wings of an insect are strengthened by number of longitudinal veins you can see the veins here on the wings these wings they are especially strengthened by these veins they have cross connections can you see the cross connections yes so when you zoom it and see you can see the cross connections of the wing veins these are often diagnostic for different evolutionary lineage and these wing venation you can see this venation helps in identifying or diagnosing the evolution of the evolutionary lineage of the insects and also helps to know the identification of the insects to the family or the genus level or or the order level they belongs to physically some of the insects move their flight muscles directly or directly or indirectly in insects with direct flight the wing muscles directly attached to the wing base so that a small downward movement of the wing base lifts the wing itself upward those insects with indirect flight have muscles that attach to and deform the thorax causing the wings to move as well okay the wings again remember the wings are present in only one sex often the males in some groups such as velvet ants and streptistera were selectively lost they are selectively lost and in certain kinds of insects such as social insects that is uh, that is ants termites rarely the female is winged but the male not okay in some cases wings are produced at a particular times in their life cycle such as in the dispersal phase of certain insects like aphids the wing structure and coloration often vary with the morphs such as aphids migratory phases of locus polymorphic butterflies at rest the wings of the insects may held flat or folded a number of times along specific patterns most typically it is the hind wings which are folded but in a few groups such as the vespid wasps it is the four wings okay now yes i am telling about the modification of this wings right so here the elytra the elytra wing is tough so you can see this also a beetle right so beetles and weevils the wing is tough and protective in function it is very tough right and it protects the hind wings this wing protects the hind wings and the abdomen so this type of wings which are modified into tough and hardened structures for protection of the hind parts and whole body is called as elytra not it so the four wings are modified in the form of a tough protective structures called as elytra you can see the elytra these are the hind wings these are soft these are scaly this consists of veins whereas the four wings are hardened structure which protects the hind wings as well as the body so this is examined in beetles and weevils the so modification of insect wings especially the hind wings 
sorry these are yeah hemi elytra there are certain kinds of wings which are modified in the form of hemi elytra so hemi elytra are also the four wings the basal half of the wing is thick and leathery you can see the basal half half of the wing is thick and leathery the distal half is membranous in nature so this one the half half is thick and leathery and distal half is membranous in nature so such kind of uh, only half of the wing is thick and the other half is not thick that is why it is called as hemi elytra got it so elytra is the wings which are whether fore wings or hind wings which are modified to form a hardened structures are called as elytra here basically the fore wings of forms the elytra but in some of the insects only one pair of wings might be there in such cases one pair of wings might be form the elytra or hemi elytra so the hemi elytra is half of the wings are modified to form with head uh, feathery uh, leathery and thick and so on the half is membranous that is why this type of wings are called as hemi elytra tegmina tegmina the wings you can see the wings here the wings of certain kinds of insects such as grasshoppers and cockroach especially the four wings these wings are leathery or parchment like they are leathery or parchment like and in protective function such kind of four wings which are in the form of leathery or parchment type are known as tegmina which is especially seen in grasshoppers and cockroaches halters another feature another modification of the insect wings or halters especially the wings are modified here into small knob like you can see here small knob like halters especially the hind wings forms in the form of halters remember elytra especially or the four wings whereas halters are especially hind wings the wings are modified the hind wings are modified into a small knob like structure in certain kinds of insects like house fly or the other horse flies the other kinds of flies you find the hind wing modified into small knob like structures called halters yeah here again i showed you the elytra already have showed the elytra in the previous slide this one again this is kept here actually it has to kept there only okay elytra elytra is also found in beetles weevils earwigs yeah you can see the four wings or hardened structure is called as elytra elytra are the four wings modified four wings and halters are modified hind wings okay pseudo halters these are similar to the halters but different in location the location of this wings is different that's why they are called as pseudo halters what it four wings here the four wings are modified into halters you can see these are the four wings these are the hind wings here the four wings are modified into halters so they are that is they are similar to halters pseudo halters are similar to halters actually what are halters halters are the four wings modified into halters but what are pseudo halters the the pseudo so, uh, they are the location of the halters is changed that's why they are called as pseudo halters got it so example striptistera the insects belong to striptistera stylopods male stylopods you can see these are called as pseudo halters originally halters are the modified four wings of halters but these are of course modified four wings but their location is different where it's supposed to be where it, their location is changed that's why they're called as pseudo 
halters. They resemble halters, but their location is changed. That's why they are called as pseudo halters. Okay, another types of wings called as membranous wings. So the wings are thin and transparent. You can see the membrane, membranous structures. You can see the venation. You can see the crisscross connections, right? So they're transparent, especially dragonflies, honeybees, and termites. You find this kind of wings. The hind wings are very thin and broad like membranes in grasshoppers. So this you can see in dragonflies. They are very thin and transparent. This with clear venation. This type of wings are called as membranous wings. Both fore wings and hind wings are membranous in nature. Fringed wings. So fringed wings. The wings are in the form of the wings are actually reduced here. The venation is come almost reduced here and a frill, uh, feathery like wings are present here which is the form of a fringe. It's a form of a fringe with feathery with marginal hair like structures like feather appearance is produced to the wings. Such kind of wings with a fringe like feathers are known as fringed wings especially found in trips belonging to Isonoptera. So these wings of different insects are differing in size, shape, texture and other structural details. So four wings and hind wings are present in insects. Certain insects doesn't have wings Entity codes. Certain wings have external wings, certain have internal wings. And the four wings are modified into elytra halters. Hind wings are, hind wings are also modified. The four wings are uh, modified into elytra and hind wings are modified into halters. Okay, the four wings usually differ from the hind wing of the same insect. So they are not identical. Four wings are different from the hind wing. The size varies and the shape also sometimes varies. So the, the wings are different in different kinds of insects. So some of the examples you have seen just now and the modifications also you have seen such as fringed wings, membranous wings, Pseudo halters, the halters, tegimna, hemi elytra, elytra. Okay, so some of the insects have scales also. So some of the insects they have tegimna. So the tegimna is parchment like texture, whereas some of the insects are scales, the complete scales. The scales insects are especially present in butterflies and moths. Okay, so these are the different types of wings found in insects. And what are the functions, as I already told you, the functions of the wings are flight. So they observe the rotationary vibrations which is especially affected by the thoracic muscles connected to the wings and the help in protection of the body, especially the form. These wings form as a protective shield on the covering on covering the abdomen. The four wings are in the form of elytra, which you have seen in certain kinds of beetles and weevils, and they act as balancing organs. So here the Hind wings are modified in the form of halters in certain kinds of flies and mosquitoes, which helps in balancing the insects. And some of the insects, the sound, the, the wings produces a, a sound, sound producing organs in certain kinds of insects, such as crickets. And importance for insect classification, the insects, as I told you, the insects helps in Diagnosing, diagnosing the evolutionary importance and also for 
classification and especially their mode of development also can be known by the types of the wings okay <laughs> and these wings uh, these are the basic uh, basics you you need to know about the wings and there are different shapes such as triangle shapes um square shapes or pointed shapes sharply pointed the four wings are larger than the uh, hind wings and some of them are wavy also so the veins some of them the veins are thicker and some of them are they are stronger the wings are stronger and some of them they are thinner and some of them are like air foil and uh, which helps in propulsion so lifting the insect just dragging the insect some of the insects have large insects than its size of the body so it depends on uh, different kinds of the insects and uh, and the power of the wing muscles and the power of the wing muscles and the uh, and also it depends upon the ratio between the power of the wing muscles and uh, uh, the light body weight and so that it helps in beating the wing frequency and lifting the insects so the wings beat especially the butterflies it beats about 4 to 20 per second but a small winged heavily bodied flies they beat their wings more than 100 times a second and mosquitoes can beat up to 988 to 1046 times a second very interesting right so especially the light bodied butterflies they they beat their wings at the frequency of 4 to 20 per second the heavy bodied flies with small wings they beat about 100 times a second and mosquitoes can beat up to 988 to 1046 times a second my god incredible the same goes for flights thought though it is generally difficult to estimate the speed of insects in flight right most insects can probably fly faster in nature than they do in controlled experiments okay right so this is about uh, today's topic that is about the uh, basics of entomology especially with the types of mouth parts and types of wings okay so thank you for now and we'll meet again with the, the same topic continuation with the external morphological features of the insects in the next class until then bye